Hey, what's up everybody, Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get Nintendo Switch emulation up and running on Botticera. So in order to do this, just make sure before you dive into this tutorial video any further, that first off, you hit that subscribe button, but also you wanna make sure that you boot up your PC running Botticera and have that connected to Wi-Fi because we're going to be sharing files from your regular PC over to your gaming PC because you're not going to wanna to use a flash drive or an SD card to move these really large files and ROMs over to your Botticera setup. So let's dive into it and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate to archive.org. And once we do, we're gonna go over to the search bar and we're gonna type in switch emulator files Botticera. And we're gonna go ahead and hit enter or go next to the search bar. And right here, you can see the three different options that populate in, but we're gonna to go to the one from Botticera guys. So that should be the middle one. If I'm not mistaken, it may change over time, but typically it's going to be that middle one and double check it that it is from Botticera guys. So we'll go ahead and click on this option right here. And I will provide you guys with a direct link to this. So you don't even have to search this, but if you are going in long ways, this is how you would access these files. So we can scroll down here. And we're actually gonna go over to download options and you're gonna notice that there's a zip option. If you hover over that, there's a download tab that populates in. So just click on that and it'll automatically start to download up there in the upper right corner. So this should go pretty quickly because this is just your Botticera files for Switch emulation. So not a whole lot in here. So it should take you about five to 10 minutes to fully download this. So let it do its thing and we'll come back once it's complete. All right, so this is just completed its downloads. We can either access it through our downloads dropdown or go into File Explorer, which is what I'm doing right now. I have it in recent files, but I'm going to find it in my downloads here. You can see it says Botticera Switch there, and it is currently a compressed zipped file. So if we open it up, you can see we have BIOS, ROMs, System, Changelog, and README. So there's five parts to this, and we're going to actually copy and paste all these in. But for right now, we're going to go into BIOS. So we'll double click here, double click on switch within that. And there's a readme file here. So we'll open this up and this just has our instructions. It says your prod keys, dev keys, and title keys must be copied in this folder. So we don't need to worry about dev keys, but we do need switch prod keys and title keys. So we can find these online. Reddit is a great place to locate these. So just a simple Google search should get you through to finding these and locating them online. Once you do, you'll download them, save them to your computer, and we're gonna simply go in and copy and paste them directly into our BIOS folder within here. So I'll show you guys exactly what that process looks like. So I'm gonna back out right now. And I'm gonna open up my file explorer again. I'm gonna go into downloads, and here you can see I have my keys right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just simply double click on the keys. And I've actually extracted these because they came zipped. So I'm going into the extracted ones, opening it up, and here you can see I have prod and title keys. So I'm just gonna simply highlight both of these, right click, and I'm going to copy them. Now I'm gonna X out of this. I'm gonna drop back down into File Explorer again. Now I'm gonna go into my Botticera switch files here within downloads or recent files. You're gonna access them easily either way. So we'll go into BIOS, we'll go back into switch, here is our README instructions. We're just going to click on the open area below, right click here, and now we can paste these directly in. So while we paste these in, it's likely going to say compressing, and it's gonna take, shouldn't take too long, but it might take a couple minutes to fully paste these in. Here you can see how it's laid out. It'll say prod, then README, then your title keys below that and make sure that they are keys files here. You can see under type, it says keys file. So we are good there, we can back out of this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to highlight all of these options here. And we are gonna right click, and we are going to copy them. So now we can X out of this window. We'll go back down into File Explorer yet again so now we'll go back into our file explorer and we're going to now access our Botticera file system remotely. So you need to make sure that you have your PC running Botticera booted up and connected to Wi-Fi. You're going to also want your IP address. And I have a full video that walks through the process of actually showing you 
exactly what you need to do in order to make this connection in greater detail than what I'm going to show you right now. So if you want to check that video out, link up on the top of your screen. Uh, but also, I'll put a link in the description of this video as well. But I'll show you how to do it right here too. It's just going to be kind of a crash course, a much quicker process here. So we're going to go up here to the top. We're going to backspace across this little search bar area here. We're going to do backslash, backslash, and we're going to enter in our IP address. This is going to be the IP address that shows up within our Botastera system when booted. Just go down to your network settings, and you'll be able to see your IP address. So we're going to type it in exactly as it's shown on your Botastera setup. So for me, I'm going to type that in right now. Once I do, I'll just hit enter. And you can see we get this pop up here that says enter network credentials. Now, as long as you haven't customized anything, which you likely haven't, your username for Botacera is going to be root, R-O-O-T. So we can go ahead and drop down to password and your password is going to be Linux, L-I-N-U-X. Go ahead and if you want to click remember my credentials, go ahead and do that. It's probably a good idea because we're going to be back in here again very soon. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And once you do, this should pop up exactly as it's shown here on screen. We're going to double click on the share folder. Now we're going to double click on BIOS. And now we can go ahead and paste everything that we had previously copied directly in here. So we'll just click on any of the open white area here, right click, drop down to paste and click on paste. That should be pretty much instant pasting everything in and we can drop down and just make sure that all of those actually added in there correctly. But I'm pretty confident that they did. And here you can see we have a switch folder now. So if we double click on that, you can easily see that everything that we copied previously, our prod keys, title keys, and also the readme is all located right within there. So everything is good here. So we can actually X out of this screen now. And now we are all done with switch emulation files here on archive. So we can actually X out of that window entirely. And we're going to go over to the Yuzu emulator website, which is yuzu-mu.org. We'll go ahead, let that load up. Should populate in like this. It may have changed since this video was posted. But from here, we are going to go into our downloads tab across the top. At the time of this video, it's your second tab at the very top. We're going to scroll pretty much all the way down. We're going to bypass Windows and Linux, and we're going to click on manual download at the bottom. Now, you do not have to do this portion of it, but this is what you're going to do if you want to update your um, setup that we just copy and pasted in. So this is going to actually update the mainline build in here. So you can see these were updated two days ago, two days ago, and 16 hours ago. So if you want to update to the most recent version, go ahead and click on this icon over here on the left, which is Apple Image that is going to download up there at the top. It's really quick. You can see I just clicked it. It instantly downloaded pretty much. So now we're going to access what we just downloaded. You can either click open file up here on your downloads tab or drop down to file explorer, which is what I'll show you how to do here and go into downloads. It's going to populate in the same way. We're going to click on this. And now once we click on it, we're going to right click and we're going to actually rename this because we've got a pretty long name here. So we're going to actually just change this to, it's going to be yuzu.appleimage. So I'm just going to click in here and backspace pretty much everything out of here except for yuzu. So here you can see it says now yuzu.appleimage and we are good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now right click on our newly named yuzu.appleimage file and we are going to copy it. Once we've copied it, we can X out of this page. We're going to go back into File Explorer. We're going to go back into the uh, top here and we're going to do our backslash backslash enter in our IP address again and click enter. If you saved your credentials, you no longer have to enter those in. We could just double click on our share folder here. From here, we're going to drop down to the system folder, double click on that. And now we can go into our switch folder from here. And now we're just going to right click on any of this open white area here. You can see we already have this file in here named that came when we downloaded all of this from archive, but we want to update this. And again, you don't have to do this, but if you want it to the latest version, you can go ahead and just paste in what we just saved 
direct from the Yuzu emulator website. Once you paste that in, it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite the existing file of the same name because it does have the exact same name on here. You're just going to confirm yes because you are updating what's already there. All right, so once you have updated this, and again, 100% optional here, you do not have to do this, but if you have updated this portion and you've overwritten this file, you are pretty much done setting up your Botticera Nintendo Switch emulation files within your Botticera file system. So we can X out of this completely. And we've set up everything except for Nintendo Switch ROMs. So we do need to add those because if we dive into our Botticera setup, we're not going to have the Nintendo Switch collection populating in until there are some ROMs to display games for. So we are going to now have to search for Nintendo Switch ROMs. Now I'm not gonna directly link you guys over to anything um, ROM related, no ROM websites or ROM files, but I will give you guys a quick hint on here. If you are looking for Nintendo Switch ROMs, you might want to go to one of the first websites that we used in this tutorial here. It starts with the letter A. If you went in there and went over to your search bar, you might want to look for something um, like NSP games or search for Switch NSP games, um, NSP games switch, something along those lines and you should find something that may help you out locating some games to play on here. So once you do all of that and you've downloaded some ROMs that you have saved to your computer, we're going to proceed with the next steps. But actually, before I show you guys how to upload ROMs into your file system and all of that, I want to show you guys the compatibility tab on the Yuzu emulator website. So we're going to jump into that right now. And this actually goes through and shows you what games for Nintendo Switch actually work with the Yuzu emulator. You can see here they're color coded, so blue is perfect, green is great, that off yellow sort of color is okay, that means that they're average, and everything beyond that you pretty much want to avoid. So Nintendo Switch game ROMs are generally pretty large, it takes a while to download them, so you do not want to go and blindly start downloading ROMs that you aren't sure are going to actually work with the emulator. It's just going to be a massive waste of time. So if we scroll down here, you can see that everything is in alphabetical order. So again, just make sure that whatever title you're looking to add to your Botticera setup actually works with the emulator. So don't waste your time, like I said, going with any of these red, yellow, or um, what was the other one? Uh, black. Those are just waste your time. So once you have confirmed that your ROMs do actually work, download them direct to your PC, and I'll show you now exactly how we can upload those. So we're going to go into our file explorer. We're going to go into downloads likely or wherever you have stored your Nintendo Switch ROMs. Make sure that they are XCI files. So you can see here I have Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy, and this is an XCI file. Make sure it's XCI. Some of the other ones out there, some of the other options do not work properly. So this is going to save you time. So once you've located it, confirmed it's an XCI file, you're going to click on it and right click and you're going to simply copy it. Same process as what we have done previously. Now we can go up here to the top. We're going to backspace. We're going to do our backslash backslash enter in our IP address again. Go ahead and hit enter. If you've saved your, saved your credentials, you're able to go right into your share folder. So double click on share. Now we're going to drop down to ROMs. Double click on that. And we're going to locate our switch folder. So it's in alphabetical order. So it should be down towards the bottom. We'll double click on switch. And now we are going to click on anywhere in this open area here. You can see I have a couple already added in. I've actually added this one in already as well, but we're going to go in here, right click and just click paste. And you're going to see this start to transfer over. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. So I typically find it just depends on what size ROM you're adding in. Some of them are massive, some are relatively small. It can be anywhere from 20 minutes, 25 minutes, all the way up to several hours. It just again depends on internet speed. It depends on how large your ROM file is. So be patient here. You're going to see that it fully transfers in. Once it does, you can X out of all of this, and then you're going to jump over to your Botticera setup. All right, so I just switched over to my Botticera setup here, which is a gaming PC running Botticera on an internal SSD. So what you're going to have on your end is you're likely not going to have a Nintendo Switch collection populating in yet. 
I do because I've previously set up other games on here prior to doing this tutorial for you guys. But if you're going in here and you've just added your very first ROM, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to hit your start button on your gamepad controller. That is going to open up your main menu, which you can see right here. From here, you're going to drop down to game settings, which is the second option down, and you're going to select update games lists. You're going to confirm that with yes, and now you should be able to see your Nintendo Switch collection. Now, you're not going to see video previews because you haven't yet scraped your title, but I'm going to jump in here. You can see here now I've just added this particular Crash Bandicoot game, and everything else has been scraped because I've previously set that up, but Crash Bandicoot is not, but the game is in here. So I'm going to show you guys before we actually dive into this title, I'm going to show you guys what we need to do next. First thing we're going to do is we are going to, if we're using a PlayStation style controller, we're going to highlight the game we just added, which doesn't have scraped content yet. We're going to hold down the X button. That's going to open up these additional options for the specific title that we've selected. We're going to drop down to advanced game options, and we're going to actually change two things in here. We're going to change the system language to English, if that's the language you want. We're also going to change the region to USA because a lot of these Switch ROMs are in different languages. Uh, I've seen a lot of French on here. I've also seen Japanese. So you want to switch it to English in most cases or whatever language you want it to be. Next thing we can do here is we can scrape the content. So we're going to do the same thing. Hold down that X button, drop down to scrape. And here you can see I'm using screen scraper and we have the option to scrape with all of our box art here. We don't have a video preview for this title, but you can see it's populating in here beautifully. So we're just going to select that and it's going to input all of this scraped content directly into our build. Now I have an in-depth video tutorial on how to set up Screen Scraper. If you haven't yet done that for Bob Sarah, I'll put a link on screen here and also in the description of this video as well, just so you can check that out in greater detail if you need to. Now this should update automatically for you. If it doesn't, don't panic. Just hit the start button on your gamepad controller, open up your main menu, drop down to update games lists again, go through that quick process, and now you should be able to see everything that you've just scraped. So we're going to launch this Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy game and see if it boots up properly. Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. All right, guys, you can see from this video, not the easiest process here from start to finish. Definitely a lot of steps involved, but hopefully this tutorial was a help and got you through it seamlessly. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comments section below. Reach out to me directly, whatever you need to do, always happy to help. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this and you found this information helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, smash that subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next video.